So, Gary, what is photography to you? Oh, wow. It's a constant. I think that's what the thing is. So, you know, like, we've been doing it a little while. So, a lot has changed in my life, especially over the past sort of couple of years. Previously on Camera Centre TV. I'm looking for a Welshman named Gary. Does anyone know a Welshman called Gary? Cool, isn't it? Took a wide angle, but three or four weeks back, a perfect reflection of the land of the sky. Is that still? Welcome to numero uno of the Creator Hangout videos. I was in Scotland with Gary. Let's make a video. We're in lovely Scotland. It's a little bit windy right now. What do you think of Scotland then? Oh, I love it up here, man. Yeah? Love it, yeah. It's, seen, it's just a slower pace. Slower pace. It's slower pace, man. Surrounded by nature. And I'm very fortunate to live in the heart of the kingdom. It's just idyllic, you know? I've been, yeah. I live in a natural park now. And um, it's just perfect timing, really. Yeah, fair enough, fair yeah, enough. <laughs> Mellow. Mellow. Yeah, I, love, I, love, I, love, I love this stuff. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool, yeah. 100%. It's, it's, it's just, you feel like you're, you're part of nature. Yeah, yeah, for like sure. When, and I think that's what's epic about being professional in this kind of field is that I have no other option. I have to go out. The other thing right now is that there's like lovely mountains in the background, a little bit of snow cap. The sun is coming just lovely over the mountains over there. Lovely curve of the beach right here. So just going to see if we can get that shot as well. We've only had one coffee so far. We've only had one coffee. So we need way okay. more coffee. Whilst we were down Scotland, we were mainly trying out the OM1 Mark II, so we went to the beach to try out the gradient filter. And then, a little while later, we decided to see if we can find nature in the woods somewhere. And that's where the journey continued. So I've rediscovered nature. I've rediscovered all the things that got me in love with photography to begin with. Because I had a passion for macro, well, I had a passion for photography before I could even afford a camera. I, I remember just being about, I guess, 19 or 20. And um, a couple of my friends were taking, you know, beautiful images of like dandelion heads and the white, you know, the white ones and stuff. Yeah. And I remember seeing those and thinking, God, I really want to learn to do that. I want to be able to, to get that thing. But I couldn't afford a camera until I was about 25. So, but then I might have to get one. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> There's um, something about your first camera, isn't there? Yeah, I wish I never sold it. I yeah, really I'm, wish I'd never sold yeah. I'd, I'd like to encase, I would have liked to encase it in epoxy. Yeah, just you know it's a mean? memory you don't realize really. Because if it wasn't for that first one, I, we wouldn't be here now. No, no, no. And like, and that's the thing. I think if you've got an interest in something and you don't even own the tools yet, then I think that it's beyond an interest. I think it's a calling. Yeah, because you, you, when you see things and you're just already thinking, right, okay, I really want to be able to do that. I want to experience these things. Then you just have to do it. Cameras aren't as difficult to use as they were like no. in the past, are they? No. I mean, we've got things like my camera does automatic focus stacking. Like yeah. that is a gift. <laughs> I just have to do it one shot at a time by moving my camera, physically moving my camera in small increments. Yeah. Now I can just press go, <laughs> and it goes, does it for me. I mean, just having that accessibility makes a pretty daunting, you know, task with macro is a little bit daunting, I think. At first. Yeah, I think so. It makes I, think it, I found it, I found it pretty daunting. I'd, I'd like to get into it, but um, I need to check to see if the Sony's can do the stacking as yeah. well as what the Olympus ones can. Nah, I can't. Nah, nah. nah. Best in the world. Best in the world. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the dynamic duo. Hello. Me and Garrett are going to be exploring. Yeah, we're going to be exploring. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go into the woodlands in a minute. Uh -huh. So we're at the beautiful Albi Estate up in the Scottish Highlands. It's quite the night. It's quite comfy, isn't it? Yeah, it's very comfortable. I know. And we're running workshops in here as well. Yeah. Subtle little plug. Subtle <laughs> little plug. Subtle little plug. Yeah, we're going to be running yeah. holiday. So it's like, I mean, we've got beautiful lake, the house. But more like what I think is extra cool, and we're going to go discover this any moment now, is that we can just wander off into the forest and see if we can find some, maybe some deer. Maybe some deer. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Squirrels, birds. All the bits in between. Yeah, so you're saying it. But you'll be there. I mean, and that's, that's the really the thing. most important thing. Yeah, as long as you're there. Oh, we can get the bourbons. We've got two left, haven't we? No, there's like six left, I think. Six? 
You so left me some. I, of course I left you some. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Just go blend them up. <laughs> we managed to get a lift up to a bothy. Gowin reassured me. We'll be fine. So we can start frame here without it. That's better anyway. Nah, I bet it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, so I've got the new 150 to 600. And there's a seeker deer just over there. So I'm kind of grateful that I've got this extended reach. Yeah. And I'm super grateful that we've got <laughs> IS as well, because this is effectively 1,200 mil. Um, it's pretty tricky to keep that stable, yeah. especially handheld, but this, the deer is just coming over there now and plenty of light. So I'll just shoot with all the focus points open, use the subject attack. Dogs and cats, but it's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Nature, anyway. No, you can't plan nature. No. Do you want to get your OM with something on as well, just so we can just shoot with both? Yeah, I reckon. Um, I'll use... Oh, <coughs> I'm going to grab my, my 8 to 25 again. Okay, you love that, don't you? Love that lens. But the thing is, if, like all our uh, lenses, yeah. even the wide angles, they focus really close up, so it's a super versatile yeah. lens, that one. Yeah, 100%. So let's go. Let's go. Oil bow. Oom bow, oom bow, oom bow. So I was lucky enough for Wandering to send me their sling bag and traveling through the airport with all of the gear that I need to actually complete a, you know, an idea like this. So I've got a, I got a Trinity set up there. So a 1635, a 2470, a 70 to 200. Then I've got my FX3, my A7S2, the strap I've got here, the case for the DJI Mic 2 mics, um, and everything else. It even has the ability to be able to put my uh, my 13 inch MacBook in there as well. So actually being able to travel this distance with the amount of stuff that I have is actually been really awesome. And you know, you can see I've got a tripod down the bottom here, my DJI Ronin RS3 Pro there as well. So I can get my gimbal shots, I can do everything with that. And it's really nice to actually be able to carry everything I need on me. But let's do some exploring, shall we? And it's a beautiful bag as well. It it's looks pretty. cool, doesn't it? And that matters. It's very stormtrooper. It does matter. It it's does. Looking cool is part of it. 100%. He says all this whilst looking a little bit like Dwight Schrute from the office. Whilst we're in around the area, I decided to take some landscapes with the 70-200 f4 macro. And I do love this lens. It just does pretty much everything I really want it to. Then lo and behold, I end up losing Garrett down the hill. But... Yeah, right. He does take a quite good photo. Let me give my neutral density foot that I tried on there. Ah, fair enough. How did it turn out? Well, again, you know, I'm not the best landscape photographer, but that's not what it's about, right? That is, well, that is excellent. Well, it's a pretty scene, right? Yeah. And so, for me, I, I just want to capture memories as I'm going. <coughs> it's not all about trying to get these best award-winning images every single time. No. It's a pretty scene I want to document. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So I figured, well, I'll just try to use my built in live ND yeah. and I managed to get that's a one and a half second exposure nice. in broad daylight. Sick and that was handheld? Yeah. That's sick. Yeah like to be fair though on these cameras the second is yeah. spineless like shooting a 200th on, yeah. on yours. Yeah no, definitely. <laughs> but like I know that a couple of my friends will shoot five and ten seconds handheld and they're fine. No sheep over there. Right? Should we go over to the Mosey see if the deer have started uh, making their way back down? Yeah let's do it. Because that light on there is remarkable. Having a wonderful time. <laughs> nice. So, Geraint, what is photography to you? Oh, man. It's a constant. I think that's what the thing is. So, you know, like, I've been doing it a little while. So, a lot has changed in my life, especially over the past sort of couple of years. Yeah, and photography has been that one thing that's just kind of been there the entire time. And it's kind of grown as I've grown. And I'm excited, right, to just see kind of where I end up now. Yeah. But it's a journey, isn't it? And I just think it's nice to have this one thing that you kind of build on. And as you sort of develop as a person and stuff, then I think you start feeding that back into your work sometimes. Mm. And but I noticed that, you know, I think that my pictures sometimes reflect kind of like what state of mind I'm in at the time. So I went through like uh, a period where my images were kind of like dramatic and very like moody and stuff. But I had, it was a, you know, a lot of turmoil going on. But 
for it and you just think about it as a form of self-expression, isn't it? Mm. But it's nice because I've noticed there's a change. Like, see, even since shooting up here and having this new project to work on and things like that, I think there has been a, a change in my approach to photography lately. So I'd say, yeah, it's basically a friend. It's basically a friend. <laughs> What about yourself though? What is it to you? I think when it comes to kind of like any art form, be it video, photo, drawing, knitting, whatever, it's about um, escaping from what you have day to day and experiencing something different. And I think a big part of that is, and something that's got more and more popular recently, has been just going out into nature and just experiencing something more innocent, something simpler. And I think in, the, the, in today's age, we are constantly bombarded by AI this, technology, the future, where I think photography and video let you experience the now, let you see the past um, in a way which can't be altered to a certain extent by a human hand. And it's why I think film photography in particular stunning is because it's so innocent in its uh, depiction of the world. Well it does though, it makes you think, doesn't it? Mm. I think any sort of creative thing, it does make me it does make you think. Yeah. And I I think did we talk about it in the podcast before? But I think a lot of the image that you get, they ground you, they center you. And you look back at them maybe five, ten, fifteen years later. Yeah. And you may not remember what you were up to that day and what was going on in the world that day. But you remember, well, at least I do. I remember where I was, what I was doing. Yeah. I remember the encounters I had in nature. Yeah. And I think it's really remarkable that we've got this tool that allows us to reconnect yeah. and reevaluate and actually keep track of yourself and yeah. keep, you know, so you know that we're, I'm at Wales and West um, speaking again this year. Yeah. So the topics of my talk last year were about um, that I was trying to develop my creative side. Yeah. So I figured for this talk, I'm going to just check into myself and just make sure that I kept my own word. Because I think if you say something in a public space, you have to hold yourself accountable, right? Yeah. So I figured, well, I'm going to just make sure I touch on that in my talks. Yeah. Just check in with my images that I've been shooting yeah. since then. And just, just keep track. Just make sure that I'm doing what I'm saying. Doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think I think I have been. Yeah. I've I've I think that. Um, I think it's it's a macro thing. A yeah. lot of the time, it's such a technically involved practice. Yeah. You really have to learn your camera. Yeah. You've got to learn it. And even though we've got things like in-camera focus stack and an in-camera focus bracket in that makes it slightly simpler you've still got to know what you're doing. Yeah. You've still got to know how to dial in the settings. You've still got to learn how to use it as a tool. Still. Yeah. Um, and that's been, even in itself, a journey of discovery. But moving beyond the technical and then trying to get creativity into there, I really struggled with that. Mm. So um, this is why I'm hoping that that's starting to show in some yeah. of the images. But I think, they, I think it is. Yeah. They look different now than they used to. I think the, the, the other aspect, because you're talking about how it's very so in the self, um, self diagnosing yourself, like helping yourself when it comes to photography and learning that kind of stuff. The other side of it is I really think you can meet more like minded people that you would be surprised that uh, how well you get on with them. Um, and through that, I think you end up becoming more creative or more embraceive of what you're doing in terms of a, in a creative environment and and I think building a collaborative process experiencing people in the less kind of like macro sense of being in a city but experiencing people together going out taking photos I think it's something else in which Garen actually does oh yeah yeah my, my trips and my workshops and stuff yeah so yeah and I'm can I first say though, that touching on that, I mean, mm. if it wasn't for the fact that we're both in this creative field, we wouldn't be sat here in the Highlands now, just shooting pictures of deer and having a wonderful time. Mm. And it's easy to take this kind of stuff for granted, isn't it? Yeah. But how amazing is that? Yeah. It's awesome. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Like This is what we do. Yeah. 
and we're, it's, it's a privilege that we get to do this and we're trusted enough to be mm. able to do these things. Yeah. But yeah, but you've had a little sample, I guess, of like the kind of things that we're going to be doing on my fall yeah. holidays up in yeah. this particular neck of the woods. Yeah. Um, but it's like any of my workshops, they're immersive. Yeah. Like they're always outdoors. Yeah. I've got a rain clause, basically. Um, there's no refunds if the weather's bad. But if it's really bad, yeah. then we do. <laughs> but it's, but it's, it's like, no, it's, this is nature yeah. photography. Yeah. It's not always perfect conditions. No. But then if everything is perfect the entire time, then how on earth are you going to develop and learn and shoot new? Exactly. It's like, no, you've, there's something, there's a photo opportunity everywhere. Yeah. It's just sometimes we just don't know how to see it yet. And I think if you're immersed in it, if you're immersed in nature, and this is what I try to get in through to my workshops, we're out. I teach people how to look and see photo opportunities rather than simply dialing in the technical specs of the camera. Yeah. That's a very important, you need to know it. Yeah, I think people get weighed down in the idea that um, photography or video is technical. No, it's about what you feel, I think, more. I mean, it's yeah. good to know it, it's good to know the you specs. Need, yeah, you need to know how to use it in order to effectively communicate and to shoot. But I, th I see photography as a form of visual language. So I'm, every single skill that I pick up is basically adding an extra word into my vocabulary. Mm. So this is why I think it's, it's important to just diversify your technique. And as soon as you're comfortable with something, start introducing things that are a bit more challenging yeah. or a bit more unfamiliar. And you can always, you know, rebuild on those technical skills again. Yeah. So I've now I've noticed that my images have hopefully getting a bit more creative. I know that I need to brush up on some of my technical skills again yeah. in order to tie them both together. Yeah. But I just think that's a journey where everyone's on at their own pace and their own time. And I think when you're running things like workshops, and I work with uh, Commander University also, so I work with a, a range of people. Um, even though it's a group workshop, we're in there together, everyone's basically on a one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. And there's no competitiveness unless you're competing just with your own abilities. Because mm -hmm. it's impossible to yeah. compete with others. Yeah. It's, what's the point? No. We're all in here for fun. Yeah, exactly. I don't get it. I don't... I think a big part of today's society is on, based on comparison to other people. Yeah. So like, what am I compared to this person? And it just needs to not be, you need to be... We've been there though. I've been there myself, yeah. especially it's when I was same. new. But like, when you're new to things, but it's, it's, the thing, it's nice because it's inspired. Yeah. If you see people and you think, wow, these pictures are incredible. I want to be able to get pictures like that one day. That's yeah. different. But if you're comparing yourself and thinking, I'm never going to be that good. Oh, yeah. my pictures aren't that good. Yeah. Then that year, basically giving yourself an impossible task. Yeah. You just keep having fun and play. Mm. Just get it wrong. Because yeah. I think what, what on earth is the worst thing that's going to happen if you miss a photo? Oh, well, exactly. There's no, there's no meteor coming to smash no. it. Well, and it's just like, if you miss it, and then it was never yours. So just chill and use it as motivation to go again. Perfect. From there, me and Geraint walked all the way back down to the main place I was staying and it was just a lovely journey. I think the conversation that we just had there is one of my favorite things I like to do whenever I encounter creatives is talk to them about what they think about being a part of this community. And meeting up with Geraint again was a genuine pleasure. He's a man that has taken such amazing photos and I really wish him luck on this new journey in photography. I think every now and then it's good for us to mix things up a little bit, experiment and see things from a different point of view. And to do that in an art form which you've got so used to and then going into a different area I think is a very brave endeavour. And like I said, I wish him all the best. All things considered though, I look a little bit like Kenny from South Park tonight. <laughs> All things considered though, it's been a hell of a journey, absolutely amazing. Thank you for hosting me again, uh, hosting me again, I'll be like being part of the video. Oh man, thanks for coming all this way. You, man, it's epic, I mean, yeah. yourself and camera set there, you came all the way up to the Highlands Always, for an adventure. Anything for it's you. amazing. Anything for oh. 
And if you liked this video, make sure you like, follow and subscribe if you want to see more. Have a good day.